Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for yet a beautiful brand new day. We are still addressing the issue of the fourth cycle of love. The thing is so deep, it's so tough that we, God wants us to make sure we understand and we walk in them. We flow in them and become very matured in them. We've got to love our enemies. Loving God is cool. Loving yourself is cool. Loving your neighbor is cool. But loving your enemy is tough. And I say it's tough because it's not easy. I won't sit here as a preacher and pretend. And I know you know, just as I know, that loving your enemy is not cool at all. It is tough. It is hard. It is something that is very demanding. It challenges your nature, your human nature. It challenges your ideology, challenges your thinking, challenges your emotion, challenges your will, challenges your personality. Loving an enemy is a challenge to our makeup as human beings. But as spirit beings, it is very possible and it becomes cool. Let us come to the place where loving God, loving self, and loving neighbors will not be the coolest things we do. But loving our enemies too will be a cool thing to do. And the grace of God is already available for us to experience that. Today, we are looking at part four. Part four of loving your enemies. So we'll be looking at verses 29 of Luke chapter 6, verses 29. So let's go quickly to verse 29. Let's go quickly to verse 29. Jesus said, If anybody strike you on the cheek or on the jaw, turn this side of your jaw or your cheek to him. I remember a story when I got born again. I attended an all night without informing my grandfather. I was living under his roof. My grandfather was like a father. I was born again. I was youthful, youthful exuberance. I was on fire. The fire is burning. So every Friday night, I look for places where they truly worship God and I join them for an all night. So my first all night I attended, I did not inform my grandfather. He became worried. They couldn't find me and I gave him a sleepless night. When I came back at dawn, I'd be reported to one of my uncles. And when I came, he stood at the entrance and denied me access into the room. And then he gave me two dirty slabs. And I asked him that the two is not enough. If you like, I'm turning this chick also to him to slap. And he gave me a slap again. I did that because I didn't understand what Jesus was saying. I meant or I thought it was a literal thing. It was a literal striking on the cheek so when they strike you here turn this place to a strike let me tell you if somebody strike you on the cheek and you turn the other side the person will strike again that is not what jesus is saying we need to understand what jesus is saying so today we will understand what jesus is saying by when you are stricken on the cheek or somebody strike you on the cheek then you must turn the other side of your cheek even to that individual so number five principle, number five principle, number five principle is that overlook what your enemies do. Overlook what your enemies do to you or do against you. You've got to overlook it. Sometimes we look too much. Sometimes we dig too much. So we see things that we shouldn't see. Jesus is saying that when the enemy come against you, overlook. Because when somebody strikes you on the cheek, and you have what it takes to take the person on, but you just let it go or let it pass, it's like you have received a double sl slap on your face. That's what it means. I can do something. I can deal with my opponent. <clears throat> I can deal with the enemy. I can deal with the person who gave me a slap. In those days when my uncle slapped me, I used to be a bodybuilder. I used to lift metals. 
So I can actually deal with him. I can take him on. I can take him on. But the funny thing was that I took a charcoal and I marked the walls of the house. And I told him, you see what you have done? Be ready. One day I will deal with you. That was a minus. That was a subtraction in that act. Because I was a young believer. I was a new, new believer. Anytime I go to my grandfather's house, even though they have painted the wall and the mark is not there, I always see the mark. I always, I always remember the slap I received at the entrance by my uncle. He slapped me because I went for an all night, slapped me because I did not seek for permission to go to attend an all night service. I never retaliated anyway. I never fought him. I never beat him up. But I could have beaten my uncle up because I had what it took to deal with him. I was a bodybuilder. He was a slender, slimmer guy and I had all the muscles. I could have even lifted him, I mean, six feet or seven feet high and lower him down and I could have broken his waist or broken his spine. But I told him, I said, I said to him, now I'm born again, so I don't mind you today, but I'll deal with you later. It's so funny. It's so funny to me today because I hear people say the same thing. I'm going to fellowship. I'm, I'm going to attend a service. When I finish meeting with God, when I come back, I will deal with you. On my way to go and meet God, I won't bother you. But when I come back, I'll deal with you. Please, that is not what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, when an enemy opposes you or do you evil, overlook what they do. So the principle is that overlook what your enemies do. Overlook it. And sometimes it's funny. All of us who drive, when a taxi driver crosses you or the tortoise driver crosses you, sometimes it's difficult to overlook. And I say it, I'm a driver. Sometimes I, I will chase them. And I also go and cross them and ask them whether what they did was right or not. And sometimes when you do that, then the scripture comes to mind. Overlook what the enemy does to you. Jesus said, when an enemy slaps you, turn the other cheek, not literally, but what it means is that you have what it takes, but let it go and let it pass. Hallelujah. Let it go and let it pass. Now, there are some things that I want us to understand. You see, the Greek word to smite used here is a word that came from another Greek word, meaning an accidental collision. An accidental collision. Are people who intentionally want to hurt people. They take a hammer, they take an instrument, and they want to hit people. When anybody assaults you, the laws are there. Don't misapply this scripture. That Jesus said, when I'm assaulted by somebody, I should keep quiet. Assault is an offense against the state. So the thing is no more you at your level. But when there's an accidental collision, accidental situation, that is what Jesus is talking about. When an enemy accidentally strike you or do something evil against you, let it pass. Overlook it. But when somebody batters you, you have a wife who is beating you all the time. You have a husband beating you all the time. Some people don't believe that women can beat their husbands. If your wife is beating you, that is an assault. Battering you, it is an offense. Take the matter to the law and let them stop that thing. Otherwise, that person will kill you in the process. And you'll be quoting Luke chapter 6. And that's what, not what Jesus was teaching. Accidental collision. Is what Jesus said, we must watch and let go. It means to suffer. Somebody makes you suffer. Put things in place. Just want somebody, somebody to suffer. Say, let it go. Overlook it. Overlook it. Overlook it. That is why the Bible said, the events that miss, the, the events that looks or seem accidental are really ordered by God. Joseph, for example, his brother showed him, they thought they were doing something. It was accidental. It was accident according to plan. They had to sell him. He had to go to Egypt to become what God ordained him to become. So as far as God was concerned, it was accidental. But it was real plan. And Joseph forgave them because Joseph understood it. Joseph overlooked because Joseph understood what happened. Verses 29b, as I conclude. Verses 29b, as I conclude, part 4.
Don't litigate with an enemy. Don't litigate with an enemy. Don't litigate with an enemy. That's what Jesus said. He said, if an enemy comes for your cloak, let him have your undergarments too. If an enemy comes for your clothes, let him have your undergarment too. My grandmother used to litigate over one piece of land before I was born, till I was born. A few years ago, my grandmother died. They brought the court, I mean, court uh, things to my father. When my father died, being a firstborn, my aunties and my uncles called a meeting and they said, I have to further the court proceedings. I said, no. I was, I heard that this litigation was going on before I was born. In all my lifetime, I've seen litigation. My grandmother could have used her money. My father could have used his money even to buy other meaningful lands. But because of litigation with an enemy, instead of spending money to invest into other lands, they invested the lands into lawyers, into the court system, into the judges. They were paying the lawyers and they didn't know. And the lawyers were enjoying it because as long as the thing lingers, the case lingers, the litigation lingers, then it means that you are giving money to someone. I'm sure I'm speaking to someone today that as you begin to litigate with an enemy, begin also to count the cost. There is a cost element to an, I mean, litigating with an enemy. So there are enemies that will litigate against you. There are enemies that will come with violence. They can strike you. But there are also enemies that will come with litigation. They come using the law. They come trying to apply the law. Some enemies of Nehemiah, after they have tried all manner of attacks, now they now want to deploy the litigation rule. Nehemiah said, I'm busy building. Whatever you are saying against me, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. I'm busy building. They must say, I'm not going to litigate against my opponent. They will distract you from your project. They will distract you from your progress. They will bring huge cost to you. Because as long as they fail and you fail, they are happy. As long as you will lose and they will lose, they are happy. Do not litigate with an enemy. An, an, an enemy. Jesus said, when somebody come and take your cloak or your clothes, give the person your undergarment. Save time, save money, save your heart, save your peace, and stop it right now. Maybe God is speaking to someone right now to stop the litigation and begin to invest the rest of the money you have into something viable, into something great. One day, if that thing is yours, God will find a way by touching the heart of your opponent and you will have it. Do not litigate with an enemy. This is what Jesus Christ is saying. Even from what you have read. Is it your garment? They want to take your identity. They want to steal your glory. They want to take away your protection. They want to take away your brand. They want to take away your covering. They want to take away your some, that which you have to accept or draw and attract. They want to take away your camouflage grace. Jesus said, do not bother. Do not worry. Do not waste your time to litigate with an opponent, with an enemy. Some people are born to litigate. Say, so we will drag it. Some people love to drag things. They love to drag things. They love to drag things. You continue to drag things. A time will come that whatever you're dragging will tear. And it will be too late for you. Do not litigate. If my grandmother have heard this message today, she would have spent the money she wasted on the court and wasted on lawyers, and wasted on the judges, she would have bought many meaningful lands around the same area, because lands were cheap at that time, she could have bought much more, and that one small piece of land wouldn't have distracted her to the point of her death. When they brought it to me, I said, I'm not interested in litigation, the land can go, I have more lands, I'm not interested in that land. Anybody is interested as a family member, let a person take on the court issue and pursue it. God bless you. I'll see you with part five of loving your enemy to complete our love cycle. God bless you. Mega shalom. Amen.